Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello, everybody. Um, if you're interested in how the Discord server works with our Trinity roleplay thing, listen on, because that's what I'm going to talk about. We, uh, we met up with the test group in Discord the other night, and we tried a bunch of stuff out, and it all seemed like it's working pretty good. So just in the interest of helping people out that want to learn how the system works, particularly, you know, maybe future moderators that might not know all the little tricks and tools, I'm just going to briefly show you some of the stuff that we went over as a group, so that way everyone knows. All right, the first thing, oh, I have a list here, oh. rolling dice. Then this is for moderators and players, this is for everyone. How do you roll dice in this online roleplay game? It's pretty easy. Um, you can't roll dice in every single room. As you can see in the Faction War roleplay, there's a lot of rooms here. You can also see I'm behind on messages. I'll, I'll catch up someday, I promise, it's coming. Yeah, there's like, for instance, there's non-game rooms, and most of those you can't roll dice in. There's uh, the info room. That's a good place to go if you want to know how to play. That'll give you stuff like uh, the link to the Trinity game system, which you kind of need to read up on that if you want to know how the system works and how to play in it. A link to the character sheet, so and you know a link in the video on how to make your character. So yeah, the how to play, that should have some good links and stuff. You can't roll dice in the how to play area, but I think right now it's set up where you can roll dice in the out of character room. So here's how you do it. First of all, you type an exclamation point. I don't know why, it's technology. And then you say roll, because you want to roll a dice, put a space in there. And if you want to roll a six-sided dice, because that's the dice we use in this game system, is a six-sided dice, you say roll a d6. But how many d6s? Well, let's let's roll one. Let's roll one dice right now, and then enter. Boom! And as you can see there, the robot has told me that my result was two. I rolled a dice, and I got a two. So, obviously, if you want to roll more than one dice, you go roll, let's say, let's roll five dice. Five d6. So I'm rolling five of those six-sided dice. Boom! And look at that. It gives me the result of every dice. I rolled one of them was a four, one was a five, four, six, another one was a four. So that's pretty cool. Now, um, in the game system we're using, if you roll one, two, or three on your dice, that means it's, it's a failure, it's a null, it doesn't do anything. Whereas if you roll a four, or a five, or a six on your dice, that means it's a success point. So, obviously I'm massively successful, I just did a great dice roll, that would have been all successes. But, you can actually tell the uh, dice roller to indicate how many successes you have. And that can save you a little time so you don't have to sit there and like count it up you know, by hand. So the way you do that is you go roll 5d6, you know, if you're rolling 5 dice. And then you tell it that um, basically, let me know if there's any results that are higher than 3. So you do that by making two little arrows there, 3. So the way that translates is roll five six-sided dice and let me know how many of those results come out higher than three because the only the ones that come out higher than three matter for this game. So enter. Oh, look at that. I succeeded three times. Not as successful as my first roll, but still not bad. It gives me the results. One of them was a one, six, three, five, six, but yeah. There you see, nice and quick, if I roll five dice and I'm wondering, hey, how many times did I succeed? I succeeded three times. So I think you get the idea. That's how you roll dice in this game, and it's once you do it a few times, it's really easy, straightforward, easy to remember. Now next up, this is a little more for uh, the moderators and the people that are like managing the game. There's something in Discord called roles, and what that has to do is like telling players, here's where you belong. I'll just show you because it's easy. Here, here's Tari. He's an easy victim. If you're a moderator, let's say Tari, right now, if you look at him, um, blah. Anyways, to look at the roles on someone, right-click, right-clicking on Tari, and then you go down there to roles. Oh, we could we could ban Tari. That would be fun. Go down there to roles. Right now you see the roles. Tari is listed as a player. He's also listed as a moderator, because he's pretty good at that, it seems. And he's also listed as a, as a Troika member. Now, let's say that it's a new game. People are joining up different teams, and Tari's like, hey, I'm not a Troika character. This game I'm playing as a, as a you know, a Neon Knives character. Well, in that case, I would say, okay, you're not Troika, you are Neon Knives. And then just like that, 
Tari is a Neon Knives character. And that matters because based on what faction you're in, that tells you uh, where you can talk to people. Like right now we only have CCA and Troika factions set up. But basically, if you're a Troika, you can go into the Troika, the Troika chat room there and you can talk to people on your team, essentially. And you cannot see what the CCA is talking about. And vice versa. So it actually, it actually kind of matters um, what factions people are because it's this nice setup where you can, you can see what the people on your team are doing, but you can't see what your enemies are doing. So it makes for all sorts of like possibilities and surprises and plots and plans and fun things like that. Now let's go put Tari back on the, back on the, what was he before, Troika? Yeah. Let's give Tari back on the team he's supposed to be before I forget about that and screw it up permanently. There we go. So that's managing roles. There's a certain point in the game where uh, the different players decide to join one faction or another. And if you're a moderator, that's how you do it. When they tell you, hey, I want to join the Troika or the Nightmares or the Neon Knives, you right click on their name, go to roles, and then you sign them up for whatever they need to be signed up for. And oh, that's also how you kill people because the roles will affect what players can do in this Discord server. So if someone is dead, Basically, that gives them the ability to kind of be a ghost. They can go and they can look all over the place at what's happening in all the different chats, but they can't say anything because, you know, because they're dead. Of course they can't say anything. So we killed Gunner when we were all together the other night as an example. So he's kind of used to it. I'm, I'm just going to kill him again. I'm going to kill Gunner again. Boom! Oh, if I just killed Gunner, he's dead. <laughs> he, he doesn't know what hit him, but folks, he's used to it. He's, he's a professional at being killed. He's been killed a lot. All right, so at this point, Gunner can look around all the different rooms. He can look into other factions. He can look at the Troika, the CCA. Right now, we're only playing with two factions because we're kind of testing it out. But when the whole game gets going, there'd be four factions, and he could look in any of them. But he can't really interact in any of the gaming channels, you know, because he's dead. You, you can die in this game. However, he could still go into the non-game area, you know, he could post art, he could post in general, stuff like that. So if you're moderating a game, that is how roles work. That's how you kill people, that's how you let people sign up for the faction of their choice. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Uh, what else did I want to tell you about? Joining a faction, killing people, probably one of the best parts. Um, oh yeah, help. Let's say that you want to know the commands or you forget how dice rolls are supposed to work. Just ask the roleplay bot for help. And because it's technology, you use an exclamation point, because that's how technology works, and you type help. Help. Boom. And then the roleplay bot will send you a direct message with a whole list of all these different commands. So that way you know how to do anything that you need to know how to do. All right. And the last thing we're going to talk about from the standpoint of this is uh, instances. Like here you see, oh, we got factions down here. We have other stuff up here. Let's make this big so we can get more context. And here we have instances. Right now they're just named Alpha, Beta, Charlie, Delta. So what are these for? Well, basically, if you got a bunch of people in the Troika faction, let's say there's like, you know, several dozen people in the Troika faction. Well, within all those people, they actually, during the game, they're going to form individual teams of like between three to five people. And those individual teams, sometimes there's some competition to see who's the top team in a particular faction. So there might be some team team chatter that you want to you want to tell your teammates about, but you don't want to tell the other the other teams about, so that you can have an edge in a certain dice roll or something. And so essentially, instances are going to be used for making little team chat areas, or even for other specific stuff. They're very flexible, so I'll just show you what to do with them. So let's let's look at Alpha. If you want to set up an instance to be for a certain team or something, you go to Edit Channel. Oh, look at that. And then um, you go do permissions. And then once you are in permissions, you can, um, as you can see, there's mod, dev, DM, dead, player. You can add different roles and members like Troika. If you make a role for a particular team in the Troika faction, then that team would be here and you could mess with them. And within there, you can do stuff like tell people, right now the other players cannot see anything in there because all this stuff is turned off. But let's say a bunch of people join a team, you want them to be able to read messages in their little team area, you would go to their role, add it in there, and then turn on read messages, and turn on send messages, or whatever you want to do. Then you hit save changes, and there you go. That's probably the most complex one because, okay, 
because no I said okay okay so well I did that but anyways instances are probably the most complex because as you can see there's a lot of buttons here so it gives you the ability to do a lot of different things here we'll just turn off the uh, player permissions for now but yeah so that is that is basically if you want to set it up where there's a certain chat room that's just for one team or another team or even if you just need to do a private dice roll with like one other character or something like that that no one else is supposed to be seeing if it needs to be a private dice roll or something uh, using instances will give you the flexibility to set up those situations all right so that's basically it now you should be able to know how to roll dice and that'll let your character do all the stuff that it needs to do whether it's fighting or negotiating or what have you uh, you know all about roles and if you're a moderator you can get people into the faction of their choice during the recruitment stage of the game uh, if people die in the game you can attribute the death quality to them it's pretty fun you know how to get help and you even know oh, don't say it's not that big a deal and you even know how to mess around with instances and use that to create separate channels for individual teams or even individual situations in the game so yeah um Thanks very much to Gunny Waffle. He's the one that set up this server for us, and I think it's going to be pretty cool because you can kind of imagine that this provides a lot of flexibility for managing different game-related situations. And, you know, the dice rolling system makes sure that nobody can, like, cheat on dice. It's not like people are just sitting behind a microphone like, I totally rolled all, all tens, you guys. Definitely, you know. So, yeah, that's the nuts and bolts of the Discord. If you want to know how to create a character for this game, look at our previous video for Faction War. And the next thing coming up, I'm collecting character sheets from people right now, and we are going to do the first test round, I think January 4th. And that's going to involve forecasting. And that's kind of fun. It's almost like a little bit of a gambling mechanic. So stay tuned to the next video, and we'll walk you through how that works.